What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Goof coming at you through the awesomeness of the webs and Starlink. Because I have Starlink. And this, we're going to have a little discussion about Starlink. Now, you rem if you remember, I did a video not long ago talking about how they were going to start imposing data caps. Data caps. Data, data, however you want to say it. There's been an update there. There has been an update. Let's talk. And there it is. There it is. Let me read it to you. How we doing? There we go. Starlink's fair use policy describes how we manage our network traffic and allocate customer data based on your service plan. Reasonable network management. Balancing supply and demand. Starlink is a finite resource that will continue to grow as we launch additional satellites to serve the greatest number of people with high-speed internet. internet we must manage the network to balance Starlink supply with user demand, traffic neutrality. This is net neutrality, basically. We treat internet traffic equally, without discrimination based on content, sender, application, or service. Network management practices are deployed based on technical requirements for specific categories of traffic. These uh, practices are applied in an application agnostic manner meaning that the treatment of traffic uh, is independent of the content data or data. Uh, network integrity. We reserve the right to take additional network uh, management measures as necessary to, one, comply with applicable laws, and two, preserve the integrity and security of the network, including but not limited to analyzing traffic patterns to optimize services and prevent the distribution of viruses or other malicious code and three prevent a prevent or mitigate network congestion on the services including reduced speeds for some or all users distributing data based on service plan we seek to distribute da data data among our users in a fair and equitable manner by one implementing network management policies when the demand for network uh, resources actually exceeds supply and two allows users to choose among service plans at various price points depending on how much prioritized service is right for their needs uh, residential services um, priority access each service plan is allocated a certain amount of data for priority access each month priority access data data is given a uh, president over the basic access data in the starlink network see starlink specifications for details on um can we go to this can can this go anywhere let's see if it goes anywhere if it's a 404 error it's not a 404 error error oh my god so wait uh, see network specifications for details on Starlink expectations, performance, or service uh, plan. After your priority access is exhausted, you will continue to have an unlimited amount of basic access for the remainder of your billing cycle. What is the speed? Maybe this is what this says. Uh, service packages, standard business, best effort, RV, expected uploads, uh... Expected uploads with megabits, um, standard, uh, best effort RV. So I get ten to two. I get two to ten upload megabits per second. Uh, my downloads are five to fifty. So yeah, I get anywhere from a few hundred kilobytes a second to I think like six megabytes, which is not unbearable. It's usable. That's best effort. The latency is not like this because I have uh, things that are in the way. I have uh, obstructions. 99% uh, service availability, 99%. Uh, mobile service plans, um, recreational, yada, yada, yada. 10 to 30, premium, recreational, commercial, and premium. Ah, okay. There's, and oh, okay. So they don't. Okay, all right. Uh, provides two-way satellite based on inter based internet service services, They're receivable with a Starlink dish, Wi-Fi router, power supply, and mounts. Blah blah blah. Okay, okay. So this does kind of matter to me because I'm still on best effort. But yeah, 
uh, megabits per second, 5 to 50. So I get a few hundred kilobytes up to around 6 megabytes, which isn't, again, it's not, un it's not unusable. It's not uh un it's not uh not help it's 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 good it's fine it's it's completely fine so what is this okay so then there's standard I believe that's residential so you can see uh anywhere from ten to a uh to one hundred megabits per second on standard and business anywhere from forty to two hundred and twenty. Yeah, they're prioritizing business stuff uh, and premium and whatnot. They're they're prioritizing that over standard, uh, well, way over best effort. Best effort is is bottom of the barrel. Best effort and RV. <laughs> hey, RVers, you're getting the same lousy service as me. How's it feel? Anyhow, uh, so let's go back over this again. Where were we? Oh, yeah, uh, details, Starlink, uh, expected performance per service plan. After your priority access is exhausted, you will continue to have an unlimited amount of basic access for the remainder of your billing cycle. Wait, let's look back at that again real quickly. Basic access. Basic access. Ooh, and I'm not getting the connection. Every now and then, the, the connection drops because of the obstructions that I can't do it. So we have best effort REV and what is basic? What is basic? I don't see anything about basic performance fixed services. I see nothing about basic. I don't know what that is. Okay, moving back. All right, uh, peak hour usage. For residential service plans, your data usage will only count towards the priority access data limits uh, described in the chart below during 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. peak hours. And, uh, your, and the usage between 11 uh, p.m. and 7 a.m. will not count towards priority access data limits. Uh, basic access impact in times of network congestion users with basic access may experience slower speeds and reduced performance compared to priority access, uh, which may result in degradate, uh, yeah, degradation or unavailability of certain third party services or applications. I believe a lot of this was here before when I read this, but they have updated. They have updated and upgraded and they're giving you a good idea of what's going on. You can actually check the... Uh, the tracking now you can actually check it and see um how much you've used in a month uh fyi i checked mine not long ago and this last month's the last cycle i only used 165 gigabytes i thought i was using way more than that but i hadn't used that much uh i think i'll maybe end up using in a month 250 at most so yeah um Let's see here. Tracking data use and purchase priority access. You can track your monthly data usage and purchase additional priority access at any time via the Starlink app and on the Starlink customer portal by opting into being automatically charged for uh, more priority access. Uh, if you hit your data limit, see, I can check it right now, but it sounds like I'm not able to check it later. Like they haven't implemented the, the thing to where you can't check it unless you're automatic. See, that's kind of stupid. I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you Starlink. I'm going to be honest with you, with you Mr. Musk, Mr. Uh, Elon Musk. That's stupid. I should be able to check it. It shouldn't matter if I'm doing the auto thing or what. Uh I should still be able to check how much data I've used in my billing cycle. I should be able to check that at any time. I can check that at any time with my smartphone. At any time I need to check what data how much data I've used, I can check. You need to be able to do that. I shouldn't have to opt opt in for automatically getting charged extra every month uh, for premium, whatever. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah, data uses per customer will also be dis displaced on your monthly invoice. Additional details and priority access billing can be found in the Starlink FAQ and terms and services, yada, yada. So... This is what got me. If you are on residential, if you're on standard fixed as in residential, you get a terabyte a month. You get a terabyte, and then for additional data, it's 25 cents per gigabyte. It's That's not terrible because it's $10 a gigabyte 
on on uh, on uh, fudge. I don't even remember their name. This is a terrible time not be able to remember the name of a company. Viasat. Viasat and HughesNet, it is much more than that. You have to pay $10 for a gigabyte. That's a lot of money. 25 cents? I've done the math already. If I needed an extra 100 gigabytes for the month, like if I needed a little bit over a terabyte, I would be paying $25 extra. So my $110 bill would become 135 Yes, it would become $135. It's not terrible. It's not as good as I would have wanted it to be. I would have expected this to be like $0.10, cents, $0.12. Cents. I feel like that maybe would have been better. But you know what? I'll take it. I will take it. One terabyte a month. I'm not on this yet. You have to realize I'm, I'm not on this yet. I'm still on best effort. RVers, portability, and best effort. <laughs> yeah, you... you it, it just says it's not available and you can't get more or whatever because you're not on it. You don't get it. Residential people, they are elevated above people who have the mobility. You, it doesn't matter that you're, it doesn't matter if you're paying more, you're paying more for the mobility. All right. And that's stuff that they have to work with. Okay. They have to adjust things. They have, there's work going on behind the scenes. You're paying for the work behind the scenes when you decide to pick up from one location and go to another location. You're paying for that privilege, all right? So I don't want to hear from people who are on RV and they're like, and they're frustrated with it. I don't want to hear it, all right? I don't want to hear it. Um, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, they mentioned something uh, about, um, yeah, so, yeah, Starlink is an, a finite resource that will continue to grow as we launch additional satellites. So the finite amount will grow as they launch more satellites and as they launch better satellites. So what we're seeing down here right now might grow at some point. That's what it sounds like to me. I might be completely wrong and I can be corrected. If somebody thinks otherwise, they can correct me. All right. So now we're going to move on to business and mobility services. So it's kind of the same same thing. It's kind of the same deal. It's, it's kind of the same deal, but the amount of data is a little bit different. So business fixed uh, service plans. You can get a 500, I, I guess there's a, a 500 gigabyte plan, a one, a one terabyte plan, and a three terabyte plan. Um. One point one to one. What is this? I see. I don't even know what this means. I, I don't even know what this means. Uh, and they have to pay for business. They have to pay. I think they get faster speeds, though. That's the thing about business. I think businesses get faster speeds. So, yeah, they're paying a dollar per gigabyte, but it's at a faster speed. All right. Um. right. Let's see here. Uh, Service plans. Uh, so for the mobility. Yeah. There is a prim uh, for the premium and the maritime mobility mobility plans. You can get up to five terabytes. That's interesting, but I don't see the 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 pricing listed. But I guess when you go to sign up and you look at the pricings, then you get a better idea. But uh, and for these folks that are mobility, again, there's work going on behind the scenes. So there's a reason that you have to pay more. There's a reason that you pay more than the 25 cents I would have to pay on residential because I'm residential. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. It's, it's more simple. <laughs> it's, it's less of an issue. <laughs> okay. It's less of an, of an issue for people behind the scenes having to work on this and them having to change something. There's work going on. I can guarantee you there's work going on and that's why it likes it. So then there's add on services and basically certain, uh, place, uh, Certain service plans described above allow users to select add-on services uh, for additional fees per gigabyte. The fair use policy assigned to a user's primary service plan, including priority access uh, data limits, will also apply when using these add-on services. So you pay extra for transcontinental continental data, uh, so which allows a user to access Starlink services outside the continent of their service address. So if you signed up for RV service in the U.S., you have to pay you have to pay the transcontinental uh, fee in order to go to Canada or Mexico. 
basically. Uh, Ocean Oceana data. So it allows a customer who has uh, access to Starlink and they can have the services while they're out at sea. So if all of a sudden you, you take your Starlink out at sea, you, maybe you're on the, mobi the mobility one version and you want to go out to sea, you're going to have to pay extra to be able to go out to sea. <laughs> it's an add-on you will be paying extra for. Thank God I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Speeds and performance. Uh, see Star, uh, Starlink specification for details on Starlink expected performance data per service plan. Uh, stated speeds and uninterrupted use of service are not guaranteed, and I know this from experience. Uh, actual speeds will likely be lower during times of high usage. Yes, it gets pretty low during high usage, but it, it's not unbearable. I've dealt with unbearable before. Starlink has been a godsend. Uh, Starlink may temporarily reduce speeds if our network is congested. And there we go. There we go. That's what we got. And uh, now we'll switch back to me. <laughs> so a terabyte. It's not bad. And for the uh, for what I have right now, which is best effort, the speeds that I get aren't terrible. They're not unusual, unusable. You just can't. You can't. You're not getting the best speed. Like. I would have to pay 25 cents a gigabyte to get even more for higher speeds if I was on best effort. Now, you don't have to have that automatic charge, and they'll just slow you down to, I think, about best effort speed. One terabyte is manageable, especially for a guy like me. Like I just said, I looked at my uh, – and actually, let's do that real quick. I don't want to do it uh, – I want to go to it while – I don't have it up because I don't know if it shows um, a bunch of uh, information about things. Uh, yeah, I can't show because it gives a bunch of information away. So I can't show this. Actually, yes, I can show this. I can just blur out shit I don't want you to see. What is wrong with me? Okay, so let's go ahead and switch back to this again real quick. All right, so... This is my data usage right now. Let's go ahead and move my face over here. This is my data usage right now. This is what I've used since uh, 10.9, and we are coming up on 11.9. Yes, 11.9. Uh, and that is the data that, uh, that I've used. I had one day right here. Let me see if I can hover over it, and it'll say what I, what I used that day. Yeah, uh, I used about 33 gigabytes that day on off-peak, about 0.5. <laughs> um, I was doing a bunch of updates that day. That was, like, not long after I got the service, and I had tons of updates that were coming in. Uh, I had a ton of stuff that was going on. Um, yeah, I mean, yesterday, I think we got a... I used... God, three gigabytes that day. <laughs> That's all I used that day. Now, compare that to the fact that uh, when I was using this tethered to my computer, I only got 30 gigs a month, and once, once you ran out of the 30 gigs, they slowed you down to a measly 75 kilobytes a second, about, give or take. It's pathetic, uh, especially for 120. And I'm still paying 120-something dollars for this. 120 something dollars for this and 110 I think it's about 110 yeah for for the Starlink uh I wanted to downgrade this but they didn't have anything they could downgrade me to really I checked the price of the plans they had it was Jesus Christ now eventually once I get uh and the only reason I kept this by the way the only reason I kept my phone like this is because when I tether to it and I play I can play online because right now there's obstructions to the dish so I can't play, me and my brother can't play anything online. Okay. So once I'm able to get the mount that I need to buy and the pole that I need to buy, because right now all it has is a little thing that it sits on, on the hood of an old vehicle outside. Um, uh, it won't have all the obstructions. It has to be up higher. Where it's at now, it barely has obstructions. Like you can see it on the bottom part of the dish. 
uh, in the uh, set. It's like this weird hologram looking view. And it has a space, right? In the space, you can see the obstructions. They're kind of like this at the bottom. They're not really at the top. They're at the bottom. And it's the trees across the road from the guy. And there's, there's not much of it. Once I can raise the, the pole up high enough, or, or raise it up high enough on a pole, once I'm able to raise it up high enough on a pole, I won't have all the obstructions. It'll move past that, and it won't be such a big deal at that point. And especially when I get residential, then I'll be able to stream. At that point, I will downgrade the hell out of this to prepaid. I don't care. Verizon, you charge too much for a measly 30 gigs. Get bent. Get bent, Verizon. You suck. You suck. That goes to that goes to Viasat and HughesNet. You suck. I get a once I'm on residential, I get a terabyte of high speed data. So yeah, uh, this isn't bad. Everything that I've seen isn't terrible. I'm one guy. I'm one human being. I'm not going to use a terabyte in a month. There's no way in hell I'm using a terabyte within a month. There's no way in hell. No way in hell. It's just not happening. And even if I do, like I said, I, if I need like 100 extra gigabytes, I'm paying $25 extra dollars. Oh, I'm shaking. I mean, that's fine. And I know why one of the reasons Starlink is having to implement this. The government grant they thought they were going to get, the current FCC said no. Fuck you, FCC. Seriously, what the fuck were you thinking? I know the, the, the speeds have degraded over time. They were waiting for that extra money so that they could supply the higher speeds. And to, and to be fair, the speeds that I'm getting right now, in my opinion, are still broadband speeds. Like I said, I can still get six megabytes a second. Not megabits. I don't know what that is in megabits. But I can still get up to like six, six megabytes when I'm downloading something, which is far superior than what I was getting with this damn phone. I was lucky to get two megabytes a second on a good day with this damn thing. And that goes for Viasat and HughesNet. You needed to give that money to Starlink. They're the only ones doing a goddamn thing. I looked into a uh, 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 fiber that's being expanded out in Texas, right? There's like a whole site on it and everything, and they have a Facebook page. And I and they're like, do you know what they want people to do? They want me to spread the word and, and basically go do a survey. Just go out and talk to everybody and say, do you like to take a survey? Would you like... Fiber in the area? I get enough fiber. I eat uh, certain cereals in the morning. Not that kind of fiber, sir. I'm talking broadband. Why the hell do I need broadband? And, and these same people, you know damn well, would probably pay for the broadband if they just fucking brought it here. It's crazy. It's crazy. So the only ones that are actually doing anything, especially in my little part of Texas, is Starlink. That's it. You needed to give that goddamn money to Starlink, FCC. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Government. Government bullshit. Government bullshit. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm not anti-government. I'm anti-idiots running the government. And that's funny. That's funny for me because I voted Democrat quite a bit. I'm not going to go too far into that. I don't want to piss people off who are Republican. Yeah, everybody's like, yeah, you didn't vote for, you didn't vote for a Republican? What the fuck is wrong with you, you sick son of a bitch? Why did you vote Democrat? Are you one of them liberal bastards from, are you one of them liberal bastards from California? Hey, you take your goddamn ass back there. Take your goddamn ass back there. We don't want you here. Seriously, you get that. Like, when I go out and I talk to people around here, people who don't know me and I'm, it's the first time I'm talking to them, they immediately go, where are you from? Are you from California? No, I'm from here. I was born in Houston, Texas in 1980. 1980! I was born in 1980 in Houston. You don't sound like you're from Texas. You sound like you're from California. You want them liberal some bitches? I'm moderate. That's just as bad, motherfucker. You need to get the hell out. Get the hell out of Texas. We don't want your liberal ass here. I'm like, I just said I'm a moderate. Uh, that's, a sad, that's just as bad. You won't pick my side. Fuck these rednecks. Fuck these rednecks. Oh, my God. Anyhow, this has been the goof. This isn't too 
bad. Like, I'm one person. I feel more, I feel bad for the families. Okay, those are the ones I feel bad for that are using multiple terabytes a month because they're watching 4K. You don't need 4K. 4K isn't necessary. It, it, it's not necessary. 1080p looks fine. It does. It just does. Anyhow, so this has been The Goof. And uh, I'll, I'll see you in another one later. Uh, goodbye.